What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and a look at Tampa, Florida. Tampa sits on Tampa Bay on the west side of the state, which is the Gulf side of Florida, about midway up the coast. It's the main city in the Tampa Bay metro area, I guess you could call it, with St. Petersburg, Clearwater. I've always felt Tampa is a little underappreciated as far as Florida cities go. It is often overshadowed by places like Miami, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, and these days Jacksonville a little bit. Tampa is the largest city in the Tampa Bay metro area, and it's the third most populous city in Florida after Jacksonville and Miami. It's the 52nd largest city in the United States. If you live here, you get warm weather, you you have access to great beaches and a pretty cool pirate festival every year. Tampa has a long history. The whole Tampa Bay area was inhabited by indigenous people for thousands of years before Europeans got here. And that's based on ceramic findings that they know are at least 2,000 years old. The actual city of Tampa started off as a military center during the 19th century with the establishment of Fort Brooke in January of 1824. It was incorporated into a city in 1887 following the Civil War. The number of Native Americans had been decreased across Florida and the western hemisphere due to infectious diseases brought from Europe, so there weren't many left when the Europeans started to settle the Tampa area. The indigenous cultures of the Tampa Bay area had collapsed by the early 1600s. The Spanish were the first Europeans that laid claim to Florida, and the U.S. bought it from Spain in 1821 and built forts and trading posts. Tampa was officially incorporated as the village of Tampa on January 18, 1849. At the time, they had about 185 people living in there. The population of Tampa has been growing ever since we bought it from the Spanish. They've had one decade where they actually lost a little population, and that was in the 1980 census. Some decades, like the 1960 decade census, whatever you want to call it, they actually gained 120%. In 1950, they only had 120,000. By 1960, they had 274,000 living in the city of Tampa, not the whole metro area. At the 2000 census, there were 303,000 residents in Tampa, and in the 2020 census, they had 384,000, with the whole metro area having a little over 3 million residents. So it's kind of big and it's kind of popular. Maybe not so much for the people that are into religion. A study was done where they ranked the 51 largest cities in the U.S. by all kinds of categories. And one of the categories was how often do the residents attend religious services. Tampa, was second to last. Only 32% of their population regularly attends religious service. Number 51, the absolute dead last, was Portland, Oregon, with 28% of their population attending religious services on the regular. If you want to look at the racial makeup of Tampa, 46.3% of the population is white. Black or African American is 26.2%. Hispanic or Latino is 23.1%. Asian is 3.4%. Multi-race, meaning two or more races, is 3.2%. Everyone else is under 1%. In the 1800s, the discovery of phosphate in the Tampa area brought a lot of people and brought a rail line. This rail line and the phosphorus were key to turning Tampa into what it is today. It was really crucial in the development of the area. And by 1900, Tampa became one of Florida's largest cities. The rail line was owned by a man named Henry B. Plant, and that rail line helped get the phosphate out of Tampa and the people into Tampa. The first tourists to the area actually showed up in 1883. To this day, tourism is still one of their number one economic drivers, but they also have insurance, finance, healthcare, technology companies, construction, maritime industries, all kinds of good things are happening in Tampa. Tampa has one of the largest, if not the largest, port in the state of Florida, bringing in over $15 billion a year to the local economy or to the state's economy. The biggest employers in the Tampa metro area and the city of Tampa are Baycare Health Systems, Public Supermarket, HCA West Florida, Frontier Communications. That one might not be that accurate right now because Frontier had to claim bankruptcy like last year, year before. I know they went public again in 2021, but they'd hit bankruptcy. So I'm not sure how many people they employ there anymore, but it's still on the list as one of their largest employers. You also have Tampa General Hospital, Walmart, Florida Hospital, JP Morgan Chase & Company has a couple five, 6,000. Moffitt Cancer Center employs over 4,000. And City, like Citibank, employs over 4,000. 
thousand people. You also have McDill Air Force Base. It remains one of the major employers in the area. I think they have over 15,000 active military living on that base or in the area. And of course, they have a whole bunch of civilian contractors that work on the base too. Now we look at neighborhoods. On this one, we usually like to look at probably one of the best neighborhoods and one of the worst neighborhoods. And I have to give you a disclaimer. I'm not saying these are the absolute worst or the absolute best. I'm just going by the livability score. And the livability score includes things like their housing prices, their crime rate, their schools. All those things combined give you a livability score. I'm sure a lot of the locals won't agree with this. I'm just going by a stat, okay? And we also use the actual name of the neighborhood. A lot of the locals might call it something different, but people watching this like to look things up like this on Google or maybe they're talking to a real estate agent and they have to give the exact name of the neighborhood that they're looking at. Like I've said before, I grew up in a neighborhood called West Torrance. That was my childhood home. Come to find out years later, West Torrance is actually closer to the high school West Torrance. My neighborhood was actually called Southwood. And if you want to look it up on Google Maps or talk to a real estate agent, you're looking for Southwood. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. When it comes to great neighborhoods in the Tampa area, there's quite a few to choose from. I mean, it's right there on the water. You have potential for a lot of very nice and expensive neighborhoods, but we're going to go with Bayshore Gardens because it has the highest livability score of 97. Bayshore Gardens is a smaller neighborhood with only about 2,000 residents. Their houses here, because it's right on the water, they vary drastically. There's a few that I've seen for over $4 million, but most of the good ones right near the water are going to be million, million and a half. You can go inland a little bit, which I'm talking three or four blocks, and find some that are under under 600,000. Those are few and far between, but they are available for you if you could find one. When it comes to their crime rate, they're actually 63% lower than the national average, and their cost of living is 5% lower than the national average. Overall, Florida is pretty easy on the bank account. I think if Bayshore Gardens was in any other state like California or Virginia, someplace else with a nice ocean front property, it'd be a lot more expensive. But Florida knows how to keep its prices down. Their schools get rated an A, their housing is an A minus, their employment is an A minus, so they do pretty good. They have a lot of things to do around there too. When you look at the other side of Tampa's neighborhood coin, you have Grant Park. Grant Park is not the best place to live. It's not terrible. Like I've said before, you got other neighborhoods in the country that are in places like Camden, New Jersey, East St. Louis that are incredibly dangerous. This one's not great, but it's not the worst. The total crime rate in Grant Park is 79% higher than the national average. Their employment kind of sucks. The income per capita is 58% lower than the national average, and their unemployment at the end of 2021 was 160 percent higher than the national average. Those aren't good numbers. The good news is their cost of living is pretty low, but their schools also get rated really horrible. Grant Park's livability score is 46, and if you're looking for them on the map, you're going to find them northeast of downtown Tampa. Grant Park has a few things that normally add to a neighborhood's suckage level. They have a couple different industrial areas surrounding the neighborhood, along with Interstate 4 running along the southeast border of the neighborhood. They also have a good-sized cemetery to the west of Grant Park. There's good news there. I always try and look at the bright side of things. So let's say you're hanging out on a street corner in Grant Park and you suddenly spring a couple holes. Your relatives won't have far to go when they decide to have a ceremony for you and stick you in the ground. See? Thinking positive. When it comes to moving to an area, there's certain stats people look at for the whole area, not just a certain neighborhood, like their crime stats, their cost of living, and the typical home price. And I'm going to give those to you right now. The total crime rate of Tampa is 18% lower than the national average. Their violent crime rate is 7% higher than the national average. You have a 1 in 50 chance of becoming a victim of a crime every single year you live in the Tampa area. The cost of living here is 1% lower than the national average, and it's also 3% percent lower than the state average. Housing is 4% lower than the national average. Goods and services are 2% lower than the national average. That's not bad. The typical home price in Tampa is $350,000, roughly, give or take. It changes every month, but that's what they say right now. The median home price is roughly $350,000. You look around, since it's right on the bay, you could find homes for $5 million all the way down to $217,000 that are livable. You probably find something lower, like $150,000, but you probably won't want to live there. Probably end up in Grant Park removing plywood from the windows and having to throw out your carpet, realizing that the wood underneath your carpet needs to be thrown out, and then you finally decide to bulldoze the place.
When it comes to the food, I don't have a ton of experience with Tampa's food scene that isn't like a chain restaurant. The few times I've been there, that's kind of where we ate. I was with other people and we end up eating at, you know, IHOP type places, things like that. But one time I did have a layover in Tampa because the plane was breaking on us in midair from Miami to Mobile. So we landed in the Tampa airport for like two hours. I asked where's a good place to eat and the guy turned me on to this place called The Burger Spot. It's family owned place, over the counter type burger place. It was great. One of the best burgers, I'd say one of the top five burgers I've had in my life. They have a burger called the glazed one. It's a bacon cheeseburger with two Krispy Kreme donuts on it. I did not eat that. I'm no heart surgeon, but I can tell you this thing, it sounds delicious, but there's no way it's remotely healthy. If you're ever at the Tampa airport and you want to find this place, you just head east on MLK Boulevard. And when you see Tampa Street, it's right there on the corner. It's like 10 miles away. I think we got there in like 20 minutes. I bought the cab driver food. Oh, and while we're eating, the dude looks at me, stops eating and says, very bluntly, don't think this gets you a free ride back to the airport. <laughs> I didn't even think about it, but thanks for clearing that up for me. Good times in Tampa. Side note, he maybe had five teeth in his whole head, and that head was sporting an epic mullet. Two other places that were recommended to me were Columbia Restaurant. That's like Florida's oldest restaurant. And then there's a place called Burns Steakhouse. Apparently, they make a good steak there. If you're looking for that one, it's down by Bayshore Gardens, which we talked about earlier. As far as Columbia Restaurant goes, you could find that down in Ybor City, which is like the Latin area. It's like downtown Havana, Cuba. Nice area, though. You can get some good food over there. Tampa is tourism. Pretty much the whole Tampa Bay metro area is tourism. I mean, that's one of their biggest economic drivers. People come in there and spending money. There's a lot of things to do in this city and its metro area. Far beyond their beaches, which are excellent. They have tons of great places in this area of Florida where you can go lay out on a beach and have a good time. But beyond that, you have Bush Gardens. It's 335 acres of an African-themed amusement park with like thrill rides and exotic animals, all that good stuff. You have a water park called Adventureland. Tampa has a lot of family-friendly activities. They have a zoo and an aquarium, the Glacier Children's Museum, Big Cat Rescues there, there's a manatee viewing center, and a whole bunch of normal city recreational type parks with tons of hiking trails and they even got a waterworks park for the kids. Definitely a great place to have a vacation. When it comes to famous people that were born and possibly raised in Tampa, there's not that many. A lot of them were born in Tampa, but then moved someplace else, like Mel Tillis. He's a country western singer, probably one of the most famous ones ever. And he was born in Tampa, but his family left when he was young and moved down to West Palm Beach area. But I will tell you what, they turn out some baseball players. They have a ton of professional baseball players that came from the city of Tampa. Two of the most famous ones, Fred McGriff. He was born and raised in Tampa, played with the the Toronto Blue Jays, San Diego Padres, forever, Atlanta Braves, Tampa Bay Devil Rays, Chicago Cubs, Los Angeles Dodgers, and finished out his career in 2004 with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, which are now called the Rays. One of the greatest baseball managers ever, Tony La Russa, is from Tampa. He was born in Tampa, but he was raised in Ybor City, which is right next door. It's a suburb. He also lived in West Tampa and went to Jefferson High School in Tampa. He started off his managing career. He's a player first, but he started off his managing career career with the White Sox in 1979 to 1986. He was manager for the Athletics and then the Cardinals. And just last year, 2021, he became the manager of the White Sox again. So Tampa in a nutshell is like this. It's not a bad place to live. It's not terribly expensive. The weather is great. They don't have a terrible amount of crime. They do have some in some areas, but it's not horrible. But where their real strength is, is things to do. And it's a great vacation spot. Everyone always thinks about Miami or Orlando to go for a vacation. Don't overlook Tampa. It's a solid option. All right, everyone, that's today's video. Hope you enjoyed this look at Tampa Bay. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.